In our latest release, we've introduced a new WPF control, the Sparkline. The Sparkline can be compared to a lightweight chart without axes and value labels, and it's very useful to show value trends in a compact form. To get started, let's add a Sparkline to our WPF application. Open the Visual Studio Toolbox, search for Sparkline, and locate the Sparkline Edit Control on the Data and Analytics tab. Drop this control onto the window and slightly resize it to better see its contents. We see that a Sparkline shows some generic data points. Let's first change it to another type. To do this, in XAML, write Sparkline Edit.Style Settings and choose Line Sparkline Settings. Since these settings define the line appearance, nothing has been changed. Then replace it with bar sparkline settings to see that a sparkline displays bars. Another interesting sparkline type is win loss. It doesn't show the exact value of a data point, but only indicates if it is greater than zero, win, or less than zero, loss. And the last available sparkline type is area. For area, we'll change the brush property value to green, change its opacity to 20%, enable markers, and set their size to zero. And let's rebuild the application to see the result. In case you wish to highlight a point with a maximum value, set the Highlight Max Point property to true and specify its color and size. Same for a point with a minimum value. And let's rebuild the application to update the design surface. Now let's see how to provide data for a standalone Sparkline edit control. To do this, switch to the code behind. Here, I've already declared a custom element type with the argument column and value column properties. The main window class contains the source collection property to store data for a sparkline, and also implements the generate data method, which creates a collection of custom elements with random values. Now go to initialize component and assign grid.context to this. Then call the generate data method and create any number of points. For this example, let's do seven. Now switch to the XAML view and for the Sparkline edit control, bind its edit value property to source collection, set its point argument member to argument column and value argument member to value column. And that's it. Let's run the application to see the result. Our new Sparkline edit control can be used not only as a standalone editor, but also to display data for a WPF grid's columns. Now let's see how to embed a sparkline into the DX grid. I've prepared a WPF application containing a grid with two columns, bound to the title and sparkline data properties of a sales data object. Let's switch to the code behind. Sales data is declared in the main window as a list of sales data row objects. These objects, in turn, contain the title and sparkline data columns. The Sparkline data column here is iList, and we can put a collection of sales item objects into it. A sales item class declares two properties, argument column and value column, and will represent a simple data point inside a Sparkline. Also, I've implemented the generate rows and generate Sparkline data methods to provide test data for this example. Now let's bind a grid to this window and generate 30 rows of data. Switch to XAML and run the application to see that our grid has been successfully bound to sales data. But the result is not the one we wanted to see, so let's show sparklines in a second column. To do this, assign a sparkline edit settings object to the grid column.edit settings property. and bind its point argument member to argument column and point value member to value column. Then let's customize its appearance. 
For this, assign the Area Sparkline Settings object to the Sparkline Edit Settings dot Style Settings property and adjust some of its properties, as we did in the first part of this video. Now run the application and we see sparklines in the second grid column. And that's it. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.